Math 31, welcome to example seven. Now example seven is particularly fun, so you get to bear with me as we try and get through all of this. Now, first thing I note, I'm, I'm gonna go after my domain, but I see the GCF on the numerator, so I wanna factor that out just so I can have reference on that for later. All right, so for my domain, I've got to worry about when is my denominator equal to zero, right? Well, when is x minus one equal to zero? that's when x equals one. So let me get one out of my domain. And then keep in mind, anytime your denominator zeroes out, it's either gonna be a vertical asymptote or a whole. And you can identify vertical asymptotes that zero out only your denominator. And one only zeroes out my denominator, right? One doesn't zero out my numerator because one isn't a zero for this factor and one isn't a zero for that factor. So I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling one. Okay, for my x-intercepts, I wanna figure out where my numerator and only my numerator is zero. So my numerator is x times x plus one equaling zero. So either x is equal to zero or x plus one is equal to zero. So I get zero or negative one. And again, if I plug zero into the denominator, it doesn't zero out. If I plug negative one into the denominator, it doesn't zero out. So these two numbers zero out only my numerator. All right, and just to remind us of all of that, right, when you're on rational functions, when your numerator only zeroes out, you have an x-intercept, all right, and when your denominator only zeroes out, you have a vertical asymptote. And we're about to get into the third version, right? In, in the next example, we will actually get the whole. I know we have, I've been talking about it, and it is coming. All right, so at this point, I have two x-intercepts. I have one at the origin, and then it looked like I had one at negative one, zero. All right, for the y-intercept, let's plug in zero. So I would get zero on the numerator, negative one on the denominator, so I get zero, zero. Okay, let me start putting this on my graph. All right, so we got 10, 10. All right, I had a zero at zero. Ooh, this is gonna be scrunched in. Um, you know what I'm gonna, do? no, I'll leave it here. Okay, negative one. And then I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling one. So let me get that in there. Okay, and then let's see, the next thing we have to do is end behavior, and end behavior means I need to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So let me scooch this up just a bit so I have some more room. So the degree in the numerator is two, and the degree in the denominator is one. Okay, we're in a special case here. When the degree in the numerator is exactly one higher than the degree in the denominator, you have a slant asymptote for your end behavior, all right? So where previously I had horizontal asymptotes, I have a slant here. And if we wanna find the equation of that slant asymptote, we're gonna to need to use long division. So I'm gonna scooch this up and I'm gonna divide my polynomials here. So let me move this up so you can see my work and then we'll fill in that trait. So I'll do my work here. Okay, so I need to divide x minus one into x squared plus x. And again, I just need the mx plus b. Once I have that, I'm gonna cut and run. All right, what do I need to multiply x by to get to x squared x? So this would be x squared minus x. Subtract that binomial. This adds to two x, so I've got x to 2x multiplied by two, there's my slant asymptote, y equaling x plus two. Okay, I'm gonna scooch this back down and I'm gonna put this graph, or this line, excuse me, onto my graph. Now, we know how to graph lines. This line has got a y-intercept of two and a slope of one, so it's gonna look like that as I graph it. 
Now, again, I'm gonna dot this line. It's not officially part of my graph. So we'll get y equaling x plus two. All right, so Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see if I can get this to look a little bit nicer. There, there, okay. Oops, I'm not quite there. All right, I'm having a good time graphing the line. I'm trying to get it to be exact and I just need to move on with my life. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so just so we're clear, this was the vertical asymptote x equaling one and this was the line y equaling x plus two. All right, so we've got that. Now, again, from here, I'm kind of in the dark about what this graph is going to look like. And that's fine because we have technology, right? We can always use technology to find some ordered pairs. I do see something happening here, right? Somehow these connect. And in terms of my asymptotes, again, I'm either coming at the slant this way or this way, right? Vertical this side or this side this side or this side, this side or this side. It's, it's one of those sets, right? So I'm either here, 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 or here. I just gotta figure out which of those here's apply to this function, so let's find out. I'm gonna hit y equaling, and let's clear this out. All right, protect my binomial in the numerator with parentheses. Divide it by, again, a binomial, but it's protected with parentheses. And let's hit zoom six and see what we're working with. Okay, so I can see the general shape of this rational function, right? I'm gonna be on this piece down here and this piece up here. But what might be nice is if I could find this max and this min, just so I would have something to graph, um, some ordered pair to graph. Now, I think the minimum happens around x equaling two. That's where I think it is, ish. So I'm gonna hit second, trace. I wanna find the minimum. All right, and I'm gonna use Blinky. Let me get on the other half. So here's, here's my minimum. I'm on the left half, so I'm gonna hit enter, or the left side. Let me move around to the right side, hit enter. Hit enter through guess. And it looks like my minimum is 2.414, 5.828. So let me do this, 2.414, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.828. All right, so let me just write that my minimum, what did we get? 2.414 comma 5.828. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill this in. And if I wanted some other points to help guide me, I could head over to these numbers. So it looks like I actually have two, six, and then three, six, so they're all ooh, right in there, okay. Like that. Let me make this just look slightly better. There we go. And I don't need this one anymore, okay. So we've got that piece taken care of. If I head back to my graph, I do have a max here. It kind of looks like it's around x equaling zero, but looking at my traits, I think my max is in between negative one and zero. So let me try that. Second trace, let's do option four. I think negative one is on the left side of it, and I think zero is on the right side of it. If I hit enter through guess, it looks like I have a max at negative 0.414, and then geez, 0.17, that's a pretty small y value. So my max is at negative 0.414 and then 0.172, okay. And from here, all right, I can see that I don't need this arrow here or this arrow here. That's not gonna be my end behavior. It's gonna head here. Okay. And then I'm gonna come around 
and just get real close to that slant asymptote. Should probably pace it out a little better. There we go, something like that. So that is what my function is looking like. So my function on my graph is matching my function on my calculator. I'm even using the, the second calculation screen to find those maxes and mins like we had before. And ultimately you will need those because we need to identify the range. So the last thing I need to do is pick up that range, right? That's always our last trait. Let me scooch this back down and get this from our graph. Let's see what we got going on here. So I can see I've got a down arrow. I'm starting from negative infinity and I go to this high y value of 0.172, right? I go from negative infinity to negative 0.172 and I actually hit 0.172. And then there's a gap. You can see there's like a gap in my graph in the y direction. And I start up again at this y value of 5.828 and I head all the way up to positive infinity. All right, so let me scooch this back up one last time. And let's, oops, nope, let me keep on scooching my B. I'll go all the way up there. All right, so my range for this function is going to be negative infinity to negative 0.172 and then 5.828 to infinity. And again, I want to stress that because I actually hit those y values, I'm using brackets this time, all right, not parentheses. All right, with all of that, we're going to flip to the next example and we're finally going to get to the holes, all right, our first hole together. All right, so I will see you in a bit, gang. Bye.